What up guys, it's your boy KFlow. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the CV axles and upgrade the needle bearing to the ECGS bushing. Let's get this thing started. This video was brought to you by KFlow's Crib, your number one resource for Tacoma DIY projects. The links where you can get the tools and the parts for this upgrade will be in the description below. To perform the CV axle replacement as well as the bushing upgrade, you're going to need the following work already done. You'll need to make sure that the brake rotors and the calipers have already been removed. You also need to remove the sway bars because that will get in the way. And lastly, this is optional, you can drain the front diff and perform the front diff maintenance because when you pull out that CV axle, there's actually going to be a good amount of that lubricant shooting out the side there. So what I did was I timed it just at the same time when I needed to do that maintenance work. I do go into much higher details on those three jobs and the links for those videos will be in the description below. But to recap, the first thing we do is jack up the truck and put it on jack stands. We remove the front driver side wheel Undo the ABS harness, remove the caliper and rotor, and set that against the frame using a jack stand. Then we remove the front sway bar. Again, this part is optional. You can drain the oil from the front diff. Now we can remove the dust cap using a cold chisel and carefully working it around so that we don't damage that cap. We can now remove the cotter pin against the locking cap on the CV axle. Here, we can install a lug onto one of the studs and use a jack stand as a way to prevent the wheel bearing from turning. Now, we can brush the threads on the CV axle with a wire brush. We need a 35mm socket to remove that nut from the CV axle. I first tried using a breaker bar and an extension to remove this nut, but it was really not working. So now it was time to use the big guns. Say hello to my little friend. I took my map gas torch and torched the hell out of that nut. Finally, the breaker bar and the extension worked. And now we can remove that 35 millimeter nut completely. I used a 5 pound sledge and a softer high impact socket to break the splines loose between the CV shaft and the wheel bearing. We just need that shaft to go in only about a quarter of an inch. Now we can loosen the two 19mm bolts on the steering knuckle with a breaker bar. Now we work on the tie rod. We remove the cotter pin, brush the threads with a wire brush and use PB Blaster to loosen up that nut. Here we also use a 19mm socket to remove that castle nut. We will need another specialty tool here which is a ball joint separator which you can rent for free at your local auto shop store. We take that fork and place it in between the spindle and the tie rod and then we just take a hammer and hammer it in to expand that section so that the tie rod can completely come off. Just a quick note guys, be careful not to damage the boot on the ball joint when you are hammering this thing in. Now jack the lower control arm until the truck just barely starts lifting. And finally we can remove the two 19mm bolts that hold that ball joint to the spindle. Now we can lower the lower control arm. We pull the spindle away from the truck and push the CV shaft through using our thumbs and the spindle we can rest on a jack stand close by. Did I mention you are going to need a few jack stands. Next up is removing the CV axle. This part of the work is a little bit of a pain because you are fighting against this retaining clip that you see here on the spline. If you are reusing this CV axle, there is a method which I've seen on YouTube that some people do, 
you can use a cold chisel and hammer outwards so that it completely removes the CV axle from the housing. Since I was replacing the CV axle, I didn't really care too much about the old CV axle. So I used a cold chisel in between the housing and the CV axle to pry up that area in between. Once there was enough room, I used a bigger pickle fork in between and just hammered that in and it came off real easily. Now we can remove the seal using a bearing seal remover tool. This one I picked up from Amazon for only about $10. We can also remove the seal on the wheel bearing with the same remover, but this one was already damaged and was easily removed by hand. To remove the needle bearing, you will need a specialty tool which can be bought with that bushing from East Coast Gear Supply. And this tool is simply a needle bearing puller. The one side of the tool goes behind the needle bearing and the other two are used to pull that backside towards the outside of the housing so that the old needle bearing can be completely pulled out. So now we stuff a plastic bag in the hole to prevent the back side of the tool from falling in. We insert the smaller end into the hole against the plastic bag and make sure that it's perpendicular against the needle bearing. We thread the rest of the tool in and make sure the outside plate it's flush against the housing of the front diff. We use a 22 millimeter ratcheting wrench to turn the threaded rod clockwise until it completely pulls out the old needle bearing. We can also remove the plastic bag inside the diff. Now let's compare the two needle bearings. The OEM one is about 1.02 inches while the ECG one is 1.22 inches. So the ECG is taller by about 0.2 inches. The OEM, as you can see from this shot, has a lot of play against the CV axle. While the ECG one is tight. Yes, tight like a tiger. Here's a quick comparison shot between the old CV axle versus the new one. At this point, it will be a good idea to test fit the new seals on the two sides of the CV axles so that you know that you ordered the right parts. Now we can grease the shafts mating areas with some wheel bearing grease. Now let's move on to the installation. Let's clean the installation surface on the diff with a microfiber cloth. We apply a little bit of wheel bearing grease to help the bushing slide in during the installation. We can take our bushing and finally install it. This is an important note guys. There is a closed side and an open side on the bushing. Make sure that the closed side is on the outside of the diff housing. It protects the bushing when you are hammering it into the housing itself. I started by hammering the bushing in lightly with a dead blow hammer. It's a special hammer that prevents impact from damaging metal surfaces. Then I use a socket that's about the same diameter as the bushing with a piece of scrap wood inside to prevent it from sliding off when I'm hammering it. We can hammer the bushing until the inner surface here is flush with the flat surface of the bushing. We can now take our microfiber cloth again and clean the surfaces. We can also apply a little bit of wheel bearing grease on all the surfaces and install the new outside seal using a hammer and the side of a pin punch. We hammer it in until the metal surface is completely flush with the adjacent side of the housing. I also put a little bit of wheel bearing grease on that mating side of the seal. We can now prepare the surfaces of the wheel bearing. 
so we can take a wire brush and brush the inside of the wheel bearing and use an air gun to clean off any debris that's left. We install the new seal with a pin punch and tap it in carefully all the way around until it's flush against the adjacent surface. Again, I also put a little bit of wheel bearing grease on the mating side of the seal and a bit on the spline as well. Now we can install the new CV axle. We insert the CV axle into the diff and the opposite side we rest on a jack stand. Take a quick note guys, I did keep the nut on the one end so hammering it won't damage the threads. I use a dead blow hammer to hammer in the shaft making sure that the flange and the housing are flush. Now the rest is just reinstallation. Reinstall the spindle onto the CV shaft. Reinstall the nut as far as you can by hand. Jack the truck at the lower control arm until the truck starts just barely lifting. We use a ratchet strap to bring the upper control arm down to the lower control arm so that we can mate the lower ball joint to the spindle. Reinstall the two 19mm bolts and just keep them hand tight for now. You may have to wiggle the ball joint around as well as the spindle so that you can align those two holes. We can now reinstall the tie rod. Reinstall the castle nut and torque that down to 41 foot pounds. We can also reinstall the cotter pin. Now we can lower the lower control arm. We can torque the two 19mm bolts on the steering knuckle to 118 foot pounds. Next, let's tighten the nut on the CV shaft and torque down that 35mm nut to 173 foot pounds. We can check to make sure the wheel bearing is freely rotating. We can now install the nut locking cap and the cotter pin. And finally, reinstall the dust cap. Again, the rest of this job will be in higher details in my other videos. But to recap, we reinstall the rotor, caliper, and wheel. We refill the front diff with new lubricant and jack down the truck. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I do have a few final thoughts on the installation of both the axle and the bushing. I do remove the brake caliper and the rotor to make that spindle a lot easier to handle because if you're doing this work by yourself, it's going to be really cumbersome to try to pull the spindle up and try to catch the CV axle underneath without damaging it. This work is a bit tougher than your usual maintenance, so I would recommend to be ready to tackle any rusty bolts or any seized part. And if you're just beginning as a wrench turner, I would not recommend this work at all. If you haven't noticed, I actually didn't reinstall the sway bar because it's one of the mods I've been meaning to do. Once you remove the sway bar, it actually allows your truck to flex a little bit more so you can have traction when you're on uneven surfaces. Thanks for watching this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This one took me a lot longer than I anticipated because it was a lot more work. So make sure you give me that like and if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button because I do release a new video every week. So that's pretty much it for tonight guys. Till next time, peace out. Thank you.